In the previous lectures, we have discussed the concept of shear flow and how the internal balancing forces are developed and transferred between different parts of the beam. In this lecture, the concept of shear flow in beams is extended to built-up members in order to calculate the shear stress in the fasteners. Built-up members are the beam elements that are fabricated from simple components that are connected together, such as welded steel plates or wood boards that are connected by nails or bolts. The nails or bolts that are used for connecting the beam components are known as fasteners. With that definition, the welding could also be considered as fasteners that are connecting steel components continuously along the length of the beam. Let's look at a sample problem to understand how to calculate shear flow in the fasteners of a built-up member. The force of P is applied at the middle of the beam. The dimensions for the cross-section of the built-up members are provided, and we want to solve this problem in two different cases. First of all, I want to understand if the allowable shear stress in the bolt is 5 KSI, how much would be the required spacing between the bolts? In the second case, I want to know if the spacing between the bolts is given to be 4 inches, how much would be the shear stress developed in each bolt? For solving these types of problems, we need to determine how much is shear force in the element. And in order to do that, we need to draw the shear diagram. The force that acts at the middle part of the beam is symmetric, so each side would give half of that force. The reaction force would be P over 2. And if I draw the shear diagram on the left side, we go up by P over 2. That remains constant all the way to the middle where there is a jump downward that takes the shear force to negative P over 2, and that remains constant to the other side. I don't need to draw the moment diagram, but let me just draw that here. The moment would have zero value on the left and on the right because there are pin supports, and the maximum value would be at the intersection of the shear diagram and horizontal axis, which is at the middle of the beam. And if we want to determine how much is the maximum moment, that would be P over 2 multiplied by length over 2, so that would be PL over 4. Maximum shear is P over 2, P is 17 kips, and that would give us 8.5 kips as the maximum shear force in the length of the beam. The second step would require us to determine the section properties, including the centroid and moment of inertia. The distance of centroid to top of the section is 3.32 inches, and the moment of inertia for this section is 195.8 inch to the fourth about the horizontal axis. Why do I consider horizontal axis? Because the force is in the vertical direction, so the axis of interest would be horizontal. Now, I want to focus on the built-up part of this beam and determine how much would be the required spacing between the bolts if the allowable stress is 5 KSI. I'm going to use the concept that we have used in the past. Let me show you one animation that we started the concept of shear diagram with that. First of all, we know that connection of those parts together is very important. Otherwise, the element is not going to be as strong as the case that they are connected together. Comparing the case where they are not connected together versus they are connected together is shown in this animation. And we had some discussion about what are the differences between these two cases. Now let's look at this one. We want to see if we have different bending moments on the side, how much would be the shear flow in the element? What we did was we took out part of the element. In this case, I took out the left part of that element. And then we tried to draw the bending stresses at the element. And we see that because the bending moment is not the same on the right and on the left, the forces that are developed on the right and on the left of the element are not going to be equal to each other. We need to have a balancing force. That balancing force is called delta F, and if we consider that delta F, or balancing force, is acting on a unit length of the element, that would be called as shear flow. This shear flow is going to be developed on this part of the element, okay? The way that we determined shear stresses was we divided the shear flow by this area, which is shown by red. And in that case, the entire part is going to take that load, because those parts are fully connected together. Now. I want to see what's happening if instead of having those parts fully connected together, I use some bolts and have discontinuous connection. Now I'm going to consider the same problem with the same geometry. To make it visible, I'm going to take out the right part, like this. 
And again, we know that the required force to make that part in equilibrium is called shear flow. And we have previously developed an equation for determining that. Q or shear flow is VQ over I. V is shear force. Capital Q is the first moment of area and I is the moment of inertia. First of all, Q is going to be A multiplied by D. I'm going to look at this section from front view and then I'm going to answer this question. What part is connected by the fasteners? And we can see that we have separated the right part. So we can assume that the right part is connected to the rest of the section. So I need to calculate Q for that part that is connected. Area is 4 by 2, and that would be 8 squared inch. D, as shown here, is a distance of centroid of that shape to the centroid of the entire section. So distance of that rectangle to the top is 4 over 2, and distance of the centroid of the entire section to the top is y bar. So D would be the difference between these values, y bar minus 4 over 2, or 3.32 minus 4 over 2 and that would be 1.32 inches. I'm going to plug that back into Q equation, and we get 10.56 inch Q. This is the Q value, or the first moment of area, for the connecting part, for the part that is connected by the fasteners. All right? Now we have already determined V, Q, and I, and we can determine how much is the, how much is the shear of flow that has to be transferred to make that element in equilibrium. Let's plug the numbers, and that would give us 0 0.458 kips over inch. Let's interpret this number conceptually. This is the force that is required in one unit length, in one inch of the beam, in order to have that piece in equilibrium. So say if we have 10 inch of the beam, how much would be the force? 10 multiplied by this number, 4.58. If we have 100, or any other length, we can determine how much would be the required force. Let me remind you that if we had these parts fully connected together, I would divide Q by the entire area here in order to determine shear stress. How much is the length of that part? It's 1. Height of that is going to be considered as T. Then shear stress is going to be Q divided by T, which is the equation that we had in the past. But can I use this equation for determining shear stresses in the bolts? No. In this case, the bolts are going to have smaller area. All right, now let's go ahead and determine what would be the force in the bolts. Let's call the force that is acting on each bolt as V sub fastener or V sub F. That force is shown by red here. Also, I'm interested to see how much would be the total force that could be transferred by all fasteners in one unit length of the beam. How can I determine that? I'm going to call this force as a Q sub fastener for the shear flow that could be transferred by all the fasteners in one unit length. Why did I call this shear flow? Because this is the same force that has to be developed in the unit length of the element in order to make the element in equilibrium. But how can I determine that? Say we have a beam with a length of 10 inches, and spacing between the bolts is going to be 2 inches. And each bolt is going to take, say, 20 kips of force. Now can you tell me how much would be the total force that could be transferred by the bolts that I have in that length of 10 inch? First of all, how many bolts do I have? Let's call this N. <laughs> So let me ask this question again. How many bolts do I have in this problem? Length is 10, spacing is 2. How do we determine that for arbitrary length? Can you give me an equation for determining the number of bolts if the length is L and spacing is S? It's L over S, right? What if length is 1? Then the number of bolts is going to be 1 over S. So the number of bolts that we have in one unit length is 1 over S. If we have n bolts here, and each bolt is going to take V sub fastener, or V sub F, in this case 20 kips, how much would be the total force that could be transferred by those fasteners? n multiplied by V sub fastener. But there is another factor involved here, and that is the type of connection that we have. We know that we have double shear connection, single shear connection, or triple shear connection. So I'm going to also include that in our calculation. In general, the total shear flow that could be transferred by the fastener would be m multiplied by n 
multiplied by V sub fastener. N is the number of fasteners in the unit length. M is depending on the connection type. For instance, for the single shear connection would be 1, and for double shear connection would be 2, and so on. Okay? This is the total force that could be transferred by the fasteners. We already talked about this concept that the number of fasteners in the unit length would be length divided by the fastener, and that would be 1 over S. And then I'm going to plug that into this equation, and Q fastener would be M multiplied by V sub fastener divided by S. This is the total force that could be transferred by the fasteners in one unit length of the beam. All right, now let's look at these two parameters. The first one is the shear flow because of the applied load. On the other side, we have the shear flow that could be transferred by the bolts or the resisting shear flow. If you want to design your beam, the resistance should be stronger and more than the load. That is what we call it as the design equation. Shear flow by the fastener or Q sub fastener is larger than shear flow due to the loading, which is VQ over I. This is the main equation that we have for designing built up members. So I wanted to develop this equation for you and show you what is the concept behind that. And then we are going to use this equation for solving different types of problems. Now let's use this design equation for solving the first part of the problem. In the first part, we are looking for spacing between the bolts. Area of each bolt could be determined. The diameter of the bolt is given to be 3 quarter of inch. So area would be pi diameter squared over 4. And the allowable stress in each fastener is given to be 5 KSI. So I can determine how much would be the force that could be transferred by one fastener. That would be area multiplied by the allowable stress, and that would give us 2.21 kips. What is M in this problem? We see that the bolt is sheared just once, so M is equal to 1. V sub F is 2.21. S is what we are looking for. On the right-hand side, we have already determined how much is the shear flow, VQ over I, and that was 0.458 kips over inch. So this equation just has one unknown, and I'm going to solve that for S. S should be smaller than 4.82 inches. As long as spacing is smaller than 4.82 inches, then stress in the bolt is limited to 5 KSI. It's smaller than 5 KSI. That would be a safe design for this problem. Now let's solve the problem for the other case. This is a different case. This is a different scenario. Now, we know the fastener spacing is given to be 4 inches, and I want to determine how much would be the shear stress in each fastener. In that case, we are going to use the same design equation, but now we are looking for something else. In this case, the force in the fastener is unknown, and spacing between the fastener is given to be 4 inches. On the right-hand side, nothing has changed. Now I can solve it for force developed in each fastener. Now if I want to determine how much is shear stress in each fastener, I would simply divide that by the area and that would give us 4.15 KSI as stress in the element. So I just wanted to show you how we can use one design equation for solving different things in the problem. In the first case, we are looking for spacing. In the second case, we are looking for how much is stress in the element. Now I want you to solve a part of this problem. In the first part, you were looking for spacing, but now I'm going to set that equal to 4 inches. In the second case, you were looking for shear stress, but now I'm going to set that equal to 5 KSI. And I want you to tell me how much would be the maximum allowable force that this beam can take. Okay? So use the same design equation, but now solve it for 